Hi everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs and welcome to Stamp and Chat. Tonight we're going to have a lot of fun with the new Gina K, well it's not new, our, we've had ink for a long time, but with our Gina K Premium Dye Ink and I'm going to show you how it's water reactive. Now a lot of you have had our pads for years and years and years and our ink cubes and you may not have known that you can do water reactive techniques with it. So I thought I would show you a couple of cards tonight where we would do that with some ink blended backgrounds. So tonight I put a little poll up on Instagram right before I went on saying, should I talk about insecure or, or um, what was the topic? Uh, should I talk about bad behavior stemming from insecurity or should I talk about just being under pressure? Uh, you guys all wanted to talk about being under pressure because I think you guys all feel the same way that I do right now. There's just so much pressure in the world and it's it's tough. Every day you wake up and you're like, okay, what am I going to hear today? What am I going to see today? And what's the world going to be like today? But remember, a diamond is a chunk of coal that did well under pressure. And that's what you are. You're a diamond. So when you look in the mirror and you say to yourself, you're a fighter, Look at everything you've overcome. Don't give up today. And that's uh, that's what you have to say to yourself. Just hang in there and try to be strong. And we're going to get through all of this together. Well, I'm going to start right away because I want to do a couple of cards for you tonight. Um, and I am going to start with this piece of white cardstock. So let's head over to the overhead. And you can see this was cut out using the dimensions of the Master Layouts 1 die set. So this is three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. Now I'm awfully close up, so I'm just going to back up. Ooh, wrong way. I guess you have to back up this way. I'm going to back up just a little bit. And then the first card that I want to do, I want to use the purple tape. So I went over to work today and I got some purple tape. And this is the new purple tape. So some of you still have the older purple tape and that's this one. They don't make this one anymore. They decided to go with a lower tack version of the tape. And this way we could use it for even things like some light masking. Um, it would hold down things without tearing the paper at all. And I really like it. it I think it's, it's really good for the technique that I wanna show you tonight. So um, purple tape is very easy to tear. So I'm going to tear off a nice strip. And what I like about using this purple tape, of course, you know, I love masking magic, but this is cool because it's kind of like washi tape where it's already, you know, the thickness is going to be consistent, but um, it's even lower tack than washi tape. And I love that. Okay. So I'm going to just Tape that down like right onto my piece of cardstock here too. Wow, that's really crooked. I think that's gonna bother me. Let's see if this is better. Okay, so I'm gonna just tack that down. And all I did was mask off using the purple tape, just mask that off uh, right along the edge. I'm gonna do the same thing up at the top. And I'm actually gonna flip my piece of cardstock here because it's easier for me to see it down here. I wanna go right up to the edge here. And then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to do these two sides. Now I really like this layout when you use the master layouts die set, the number one die set. Uh, this is a really cool technique because the three and three quarter inch by five inch piece of cardstock is a nice big enough piece of cardstock that when you mask off the edges like this, it really just creates the look of a whole other layer, but it's still, it, it's not too small. Okay, so there we go. I've got that right like that. Okay, so I know that you guys know a lot about how beautifully our ink blends, and it really does. It's got great blending ability. It's got a smoothing agent in it, so it's a little bit different than some of the water reactive inks that are on the market. Uh, it's got a smoothing agent in it, but it also allows you to do some of the fun water reactive techniques to create that look of texture. So I'm going to start with some uh, turquoise sea, and then I have apple mint. I have a brush for apple mint here. And then I'm also going to mix in just a little bit of lucky clover. 
So that should all blend really nicely together. I'm gonna to start with the turquoise C. Now I'm gonna start with the apple mint. Let's start with the lightest one. Okay, so I'm gonna just pick up some apple mint ink and I'm gonna start off the piece of cardstock. I'm not gonna put my brush right in the center. I'm gonna come in from the side and blend some of that ink in to there. I'm gonna get some more ink and I'm gonna blend coming in from this side up here. Now I just love the green and turquoise combination. I think it's a beautiful combination. So for my first card, I'm going to use it. I use this combination a lot. I know you guys probably are sick of it, but it's just such a tranquil, peaceful combination. Um, for my second card, I'm definitely going to do a rainbow because who doesn't love a rainbow, right? Okay, so there's a little bit of apple mint in there. Now I'm going to blend in a little bit of turquoise C. So I'm going to come in from this angle over here and bring the turquoise C over this way. Again, in here, I'm gonna go a little bit heavy on the turquoise. Now, this is not an actual gradient blend where I'm going from, you know, lightest to darkest or, you know, through a rainbow pattern or anything like that. I am just blending randomly, but I like to kind of start somewhere. So I start on the corners, but then I work my way in. All right, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add, I want that green to be brighter. So I'm gonna add some of the Lucky Clover ink. All right, and then I'm gonna go kind of in between there, maybe a little over the apple mint. So you can see I'm really not going in that same pattern at all. And that's giving me that more cloudy kind of, I don't know, not just so patterned you still see lots of blue in there. And I'm going to go back and add a little more blue. And that's the beauty of ink blending. If you, you know, if you look at it and you go, ah, it's too much green. Well, go back and add some more blue in. You're not done until you say it's done. Plus, if you have a little bit more ink on your paper, the water reactive uh, properties of the ink seem to work a little bit better. But I honestly stumbled onto this by accident. I mean, we didn't set out to make our ink water reactive. I just happened to try it one day and it, it worked. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I have that like that. And here I have one of my favorite tools. This is the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. And it is not yellow, but mine is yellow because I have had it since almost the day that these came out. And I love this thing. And I never take my water out of it. I never clean my water out of it. I've actually mixed some pearl powders in this thing and then cleaned it out. And I've added some re -inker in here. So it's a little stained, but it still works just fine. And the water is nice and clear that's in there. I just replaced the water. So um, with this, if you just do a half trigger, it'll give you more bigger droplets. If you do a real hard push on the lever, it gives you a much finer mist. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go with the, the, more droplets. And I have some paper towels here and I recommend you have paper towels close by when you're doing this. Okay. So I'm just going to boop like that. There. There we go. Now I'm going to just sop that up right away. And look at all of those pretty white dots. Let me see if I can bring that a little closer. Can you see that? Does that show up pretty well? That is so fun. Now, I recommend, because I'm not using watercolor paper, if you're using watercolor paper, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm just using our regular Gina K Designs layering weight paper. That's all I'm using. I'm going to get my heat tool, and I'm going to dry it a little bit just because I want to stamp on it, and I don't want it to be wet because it's going to ruin my ink if it's wet. But can you see how cool that is? That's such a cool, fun look. Oh my gosh, hi Donna, you're at the retreat, you're at a stamping retreat house? 
Well, hi, everybody at the retreat. I hope you guys are having a great time. Thank you for tuning in and making me part of your retreat. I am I am truly honored about that. Thank you. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it's beautiful, too. It's really subtle, but I just love the white dots all over it like that. Okay. So let's see where we're at there. Okay, that's looking good. So now I'm going to turn it this way because this is actually the way my card is going to be. And you can always just take a little more tape if you want to just make sure, you know, to hold it down. That's totally fine because once everything gets wet, it does kind of pull up a bit. All right. So I'm going to use one of my favorite stamp sets and I haven't used this in a long time, but I really adore this stamp set. Let me get a piece of white cardstock so you can see it a little bit better. This is Fruit of the Season. So I'll zoom out a little bit better so you can see it. This was part of an autumn slash fall, or autumn is fall. <laughs> Seasons are hard. Autumn slash holiday stamp set. So it does have like a partridge in a pear tree and wishing you a joyous Christmas. But it's got this really cool bird that's beautiful for more... Um, I don't know, art journal-y kind of cards and art journals. It's got this big poinsettia. It's got pears, apples, pine needles, but I love this leaf. And I love this leaf for all kinds of like any season. So that's what I'm going to use today, this leaf. So uh, fruit of the season. Plus, I think it's fun too. Oh, it does have dyes that coordinate with it. I must have packed this dye in here when I was working on a Christmas card with the poinsettia. But this is this is a couple years old now, um, this set, but I still love it. I always go back to old stamp sets. I don't think that they have much of a lifespan. I, I love using them over and over again. Okay, so I'm going to use black onyx ink for for this. Do we lose the camera? There we go. Okay. Sorry, I must have done something wrong there. All right. So I'm going to use black onyx ink for this. Uh, all the inks do react this way that are our premium dye inks. The amalgam inks are a little bit different. They are not water reactive and our pigment ink is not water reactive, but all of our colors and we've got over 50 colors and yes, they will all do this. Okay, so I'm inking this up and this is a very sketchy stamp. So I do want you to know that that's a sketchy stamp. Um, it's not like it's not stamping well, it's meant to look kind of sketchy. So I'm gonna stamp that right in the middle. Give it some good pressure. Oh, I love that. Love it. I'm going to stamp this one down here. And I want to make sure I get right to the edge if I can. So that requires a little bit of extra pressure. I'm going to turn this upside down and stamp it right about here. Oh, I had so much fun. I stayed in a retreat house with some of my friends here in Wisconsin, and we just had a great time. It's such a nice, just a nice experience doing a crafting retreat with friends. Okay. There we go. And I'm just holding it down a little bit because... You know, the, the water reactive part is a little bit bumpy. And um, also, I just want to make sure that I've got good contact with the paper and give that ink a chance to transfer. Okay. So there's my background. Let me clean this stamp with my tidy towel. My tidy towel's getting dirty. I'm going to have to throw it in the laundry soon. I have a couple of tidy towels that I use all the time. I always use the same one when I'm doing, or the same couple when I'm doing these lives. And they get inky to the point at, you know, at some point I just need to throw them into <laughs> the washing machine. As long as you don't throw them in the dryer though, you don't wanna do that, they'll get very brittle. But the washer's fine, I put a little Tide in there and they come up so nice and clean. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the purple tape. I'm going to just be gentle about it. Even though it's low tack, you just never know, especially when you use a heat tool if you've uh, created some kind of weird permanent bond. So here we go. Oops. It really wasn't next in line. That jumped in front of the others. All right. 
I'll turn this. Don't you love that big wide border? Oh, I love that. All right. Let's turn this this way. I have to always make sure I don't have any ink on my hands because, you know, right? We all do that. Okay. So there is my design. And let me hold that up close again so you can see that. That's fun. And now you can see all the ink blending really smoothed out. It takes a little bit because of that smoothing agent and parts of it dry before other parts. So it might look a little blotchy when you first blend. But then as it dries, you can't see the seams of where, you know, the apple mint went into the lucky clover, went into the turquoise sea. It's just flawless. And then that water reactive just gives it that cool texture. So that's a lot of fun. So let's turn this into a card and then we'll make a second card. I have a few bits and pieces cut out already because I kind of had had a bunch of stuff cut out from other lives and I figured out a way to kind of make it all work together. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my piece of vellum and oh my gosh, guys, I got to tell you, I found a source for vellum that is fantastic. So we are going to be offering Gina K Designs vellum. I talked to them about doing it for us and just the weight that we want and uh, they are going to work with us. So that's in the uh, in the process right now because I know you guys really like this technique and I've been having so much fun with it. Seems like it's all I do anymore. Can I hand wash the tidy towel? You bet you can hand wash the tidy towel. Do you saturate your blender with ink? Um, I do. I get it pretty inky. That the, the ink goes in there pretty far and. I actually, um, I got these Simon Says stamp brushes and I have some from Picket Fence Studios. I've got a whole variety of them and I barely wash them. You can wash them, but like I always use this for my blues. So if I'm gonna use this a second time, I just take a piece of kind of textury cardstock or something with a little tooth and I just rub out all the excess and then I can use a lighter blue with it. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I am going to flip this over and I'm going to tape down the vellum on the back with a little bit of Gina K Designs adhesive. Now, I know you guys are waiting for adhesive. You're waiting for um, our rhinestones and our sequins to come in. You're waiting for stamp sets to arrive. You're waiting for all kinds of things. I want you to know that this week I have been getting shipping notices from manufacturers like crazy. So lots of stuff is coming in, but then, you know, I can't guarantee what's in now will still be there. So if there's something that you want, I, I recommend you grab it. Okay, so this is the second layer of the master layouts, that same size, which is three and seven eighths of an inch by five and one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to adhere this to that black piece. And I always put a little bit of tape over the vellum. And that's just to make sure that the little flaps don't escape once you tape it down. So we'll get that put into place. All right. Okay. There we go. Oh, I didn't put that very even. I'm going to move it. This is what I love about our tape is that it's a little forgiving. So if you don't have it perfect, you still get a minute or two to move the piece of cardstock and try again. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try again. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Okay. All right. So now I picked for a card base. Well, I have a couple colors here. I have, I have turquoise C, which looks very pretty but I think I'm going to use the turquoise sea for my other card and I'm going to use apple mint for this card. I think that that looks really nice and it's just a little bit more subtle. Yes, Sue, you did hear we have our own blending brushes in production. We're really excited about them too. So it's going to be like all of a sudden our website's going to get hit with 9 million things. <laughs> Everything's taking longer than it should, and um, it's all going to ship at the same time. But I did get a lot of shipping notices for things like our embellishments and um, some stamps, some stuff like that. Okay, so there we go. So that is my card. Now, what I did was 
I cut, well, I, I did this a long time ago, but I want to show you what I used. If I can find it, I dropped it somewhere here on my desktop. Well, I'll probably find it after, after I show you what it is. But I used the Wishes die, and I have a whole box of these because when I don't have any mojo, this is what I do. I die cut like... 30 of these, and then I glue glue them together in threes, and then I have 10 wishes ready to go on a card. So I'm gonna put the wishes on this there, and that's why I put the vellum down first, because I think it makes the words just pop a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside for a second. This was a little strip that I cut off of my cardstock when I cut the black panel. So it's 5 eighths of an inch, wide is what it is. And I'm going to um, do a word with this. So the word set that I'm going to use is, this is the wishes stamp set. And this was designed to coordinate with the wishes die. And we have several words and coordinating stamp sets like that. Now, this doesn't work with this. They're not meant to work together. I just wanna clear that up right away because if you buy it and you say, well, I couldn't stamp on the die cut, it's not meant to do that. This is for those times where you wanna stamp right on your card and you wanna emboss it in gold or you just want it in a bright, vibrant color and you just wanna ink it up and stamp it. This is for those times when you want a die cut word. But we decided to do them together because then if you have the die cut word, you can also use all of these strip sentiments with it. So I'm going to make this a birthday card and um, I'm gonna use the birthday for wishes. I'm gonna pick this up with my block here and then I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink. If you have Versamark, that is totally fine. You can use that. I use them interchangeably. I do like this pad um, a lot. Can you heat emboss on the vellum? Yeah, you can. You just have to be really careful. You have to have your heat gun really, really hot. So when you emboss, it's just a quick little emboss. Okay, so here we go. If my head gets in the way, I'm sorry. I just want to try to stamp this straight. There we go. Okay. So I don't know if my head got in the way, but Rena did my hair so my roots should look good. <laughs> so I'm going to use some white fine detail embossing powder. Okay. And then I'm going to, if you have any little specks anywhere, you can use a little brush or you can use whatever you have to just get rid of those little specks because once you emboss, they're going to stay there. Okay. So I'm going to use my heat tool again. And I'm going to heat it up just a little bit because I don't want this to warp too much. All right. Hey, Kathy Zilski. I saw you just joined. Hey, Kath. Okay. So let me just give a shout out to Kathy Z. Kathy Z has this amazing series on her YouTube channel, and they are 10 minute craft tips. And they're unbelievable. She's amazing. So CZ Design, Kathy Zilski, make sure you check out her YouTube channel. And I also saw Mindy Egan is in here. And Mindy also has an amazing YouTube channel. She does lots of videos for Gina K Designs. And um, I just, I love both of these girls. They do amazing stuff. Okay, now I have another little bit of good news. Um, one of the people that works for me today said that they saw this paper cutter at one of our suppliers. So we grabbed just a dozen of them to see if anybody was interested and they are on our way to us. So if anybody is interested in this paper cutter, we're going to have a few of them in stock. And if you like it, we'll just keep getting it. And if you don't like it, that's fine. I like it for a couple reasons. I really like this kind of paper cutter with a kind of a, a guillotine style handle. I feel like I can get my cuts straighter with it. And I also like it because it's turquoise and it matches my life. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take, these are the Tim Holtz uh, paper snips. These are the smaller ones and I love them. They've got a little bit of a serrated edge and that's what I'm using to cut a little 
V here in my sentiment strip. They're not perfect, but you know, that's okay. This is a handmade card. Okay, so there's my little sentiment strip, my birthday one. And I'm just gonna lay it out here. I'll put that right on top there like that, birthday wishes. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that up. So I have my sticky scissors. You can see I really need to clean these. These are just covered with goop. See it all <laughs> sticking out there? I just, I'm just lazy and I don't clean them. So I have a pair just for goop. And I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the Gina K Designs um, foam cape. I'm gonna cut it in half because this is a really super skinny sentiment. I don't even know if it's too big. It might be. Let's see. That works. Okay. So I was watching Mindy and she used one of these to place her greetings. It looked so cool and professional. So I pulled mine out. I'm going to try it. We'll see. So I'm going to put the wishes down. I've got some connect glue here. I always start my connect glue on a little piece of scrap cardstock just to make sure it doesn't, you know, all over the <laughs> card. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> Tom's looking at me like, I don't know how to spell that. And I'm just going to use a little bit, just dot it on the back of this wishes die. Judy wants to know how the raw veggie day went. Oh my gosh. It was awful. I, I have never been so miserable in my life. I've just determined that healthy eating makes me sick. That's what I've determined. It makes me sick. But you know what? I don't think it would have made me sick. I think what made me sick was the fact that I didn't have coffee. And I got that horrible caffeine withdrawal headache. It was so awful. And um, I was yelling at Tom all day. I was making it all his fault. He wasn't even the one that suggested it. I think I suggested it. Um, but it was... It was terrible. And so finally, at about seven o'clock at night, I made an egg sandwich. Oh, and, and I took two Excedrins full of caffeine and I felt so much better. So I, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm staying away from the raw diet for a little while. And then I think the next time I try it, I'm gonna go raw except for coffee. I'm gonna have to have coffee. I mean, it's still gotta be better than the way I normally eat. Okay, Mindy, I'm trying this your way to see if I look cool. Oh, I do. I look really cool. That is cool. Okay. All right. So there we go. I've got birthday on there. Now, for my eye, I could either do a white heart or a black heart. So let me see. I've got my white and black hearts here. Let's see which one looks cuter. I haven't used the white heart in a video. Maybe I will do that. I think I'm going to do the white heart because I've been using the black hearts. All right, this has got to go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just not good at that. Okay, but don't you think that's cute? I like the white one. I've, been, I've used the black ones in a lot of other videos and they are adorable and they really do kind of pull in the black stamping and the layering, but I think... For this one, I'm gonna go with the white one because the greeting is is black or is made from black cardstock. So, so I'm just gonna put a little dot of Connect Glue right on the top there. And remember the Connect Glue goes on white, but it dries clear. So if it oozes out just a little bit, that's okay. Not a problem. And that will dry clear. So once that dries, that's going to look a lot better. I'm going to take my pick, though, and I'm just going to scoop up the extra there. There we go. I use this craft pick for everything. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you only use white embossing powder? No. I use, uh, I use gold and silver. I use clear a lot for different techniques. I really like to use clear over um, color. So I'll stamp it with the Misty in color and then I'll stamp over it with embossing ink and clear powder and it makes any color um, 
look embossed. All right, so what do you think? You like that? I love it. I think it's really fun and cute. So that is a water reactive background. And there is my first little finished card. Oh, Karen Hightower's here. And Karen also has a great YouTube channel. She does all Gina K Designs cards and she's amazing. If you wanna learn no line coloring, watch Karen Hightower. She does some amazing stuff. Okay, so now I have another piece of cardstock here. And let me get my piece of scrap paper, my little piece of cardstock here. <laughs> Shelly wants coffee now. I don't blame you, Shelly. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is, Tom's trying to find that card. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a rainbow. So I'm going to start with red at the top. And then we're going to do water reactive on this rainbow. So I'm going to start over here. And very, very light handed. I want to bring this red in. Very light handed. Just to get a nice, nice soft blend. Of course, I'm going to stamp over the whole thing. So if there's little imperfections here and there, it's not anything to worry about because we're going to have the water reactive and then we're going to do stamping over it. And this piece of cardstock is also cut to the three and three quarter inches by five inches, which is the same as the Master Layouts One die set. Okay, now I'm gonna use some Tangerine Twist. And I'm gonna start just a little bit off to the side here and work my way into the red and then down a little bit. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit more tangerine to that because I want that to be a little more vibrant. Can you get the little box for the hearts? The little box for the hearts, you know, I don't rem I got it on Amazon. I don't remember the name of it, and I know somebody actually mentioned it in our last live, the name. I'm going back over with the red. It's Elizabeth something, um, and it's it, it's a whole big tray of those little um, little boxes and then they all fit conveniently in the tray and then it comes with some labels that you can put on too. So it's kind of a cool thing. I'll look for it. I'll see if I can if I can find it. But if somebody knows the name of it, just shout it out in the comments. Okay. All right. So now I'm gonna move to the um yellow and this is wild dandelion. I've seen Rena do a rainbow like this also with the electro pop inks, but I have not tried water with the electro pop inks. So I do not know if they're water reactive or not. This is again, the Gina K designs uh, layering weight white paper. And that is also on its way. And that'll be here like really fast, like in two days, our white cardstock will be back in stock. It's been selling really crazy because I think people are kind of seeing how smooth the blending is and how smooth the stamping is when you use the super smooth cardstock. And look, I, I love Nina cardstock. I have Nina cardstock, I've used it before, but I have to tell you that if you have Nina cardstock, when you touch our pure luxury cardstock, you are going, this will be the first time that you've ever felt cardstock this smooth. I'm telling you, this is the smoothest cardstock out there. And the smoother the cardstock, the tighter the weave, and the tighter the weave, the more crisp your image is gonna be and the smoother your blending is gonna be. It's just that simple. So when you have trouble with ink blending, make sure you have that high quality cardstock because that is half the battle. Nina has more of a tooth. So you're gonna see as you blend with Nina, if you hold them up side by side, you'll see a little bit of that pattern from the tooth. It's the weave in the paper and you don't have that here at all. It's so smooth. So this is Lucky Clover. And I'm already getting ink in places I don't want it, but we'll cover that up. Okay, so I'm going really light here first. 
Okay. Get a little more on there. I like to take my time when I do ink blending. It's very therapeutic, it's relaxing. Now we're gonna go down into that green with more of the wild dandelion. What orange was that? Tangerine twist. Okay. And now our final color is going to be turquoise sea. I think I might have just put, oh, here it is. Okay, <laughs> losing my ink pad lids. All right, turquoise sea. Yep, tangerine twist. Also sweet mango looks really beautiful. Yes, thank you. Elizabeth Ward is the storage container. It's a it's storage container. It's a bead thing. All right. And then I'm coming up from the bottom with this. Oh, I need more ink than that. My turquoise sea, finally, this was one of our earlier earliest colors. We I, we've had quite a few uh, color releases, but turquoise sea was really, really early on. And um, I think I've inked this pad maybe once in the seven years, six, seven years that I've had it. Um, and it is getting time because I do so much ink blending and you guys know that turquoise sea is one of my colors. I mean, I just go to it all the time. Okay. All right. Looking nice. We're green in there. What works better in humid areas, tape runners or connect glue? Hmm, that's a really good question. Well, connect glue, I mean, you can't go wrong with connect glue. Connect glue is great for cardstock, it's great for embellishments. And once it dries, it dries. It doesn't really, um, I don't think it's really affected by the humidity. Uh, it might just take a little longer to dry if it's really humid. The thing about, um, the connect glue is you just don't need as much as you think. You really need a tiny little bit. And sometimes people will say, well, I used it on my cardstock and it warped my cardstock. And that's because they really used a lot of glue. And sometimes people say, well, this glue is a small container. This glue, this is probably my first connect glue. No, yeah, is it? No, probably my second one because we changed the label. But, um, I use such a little bit. I mean, you, you're going to do like, like this tiny, tiny little line, like, you know, just like that. You don't need much. See how it's just like all staggered and it's like stitched almost. I have such a little bit. It's really sticky. If you flood your paper with any kind of glue, it's going to warp. You don't need much. Okay. So back to the spritzing. Here we go. So I'm going to spritz. Let me get my paper towel over here. I'm gonna close my embossing powder so that doesn't go on the floor. Okay, here we go. Spritz. Okay, and then I'm going to just use my paper towel here. Oh, that looks so cool. Sure, I have red velvet. Tangerine Twist, Wild Dandelion, Lucky Clover, and Turquoise Sea. I really like this because it, it doesn't just um, it doesn't it doesn't just make the white spots, but I wish you could feel it because it creates texture, which is so cool. Okay. And I'm just drying it because I want to stamp on it and I don't want anything to happen to the stamping. Okay. All right. So now what you can do is if you're not going to do any fancy, um, you know, belly bands with vellum or anything like that, you can adhere this onto your black panel prior to stamping and that will help flatten it out. And whenever I do anything with water, watercolor, um, you know, water, any, any kind of water backgrounds, um, even some of the glitz glitter gel, anything that's a wetter product, um, I always use more tape. 
or more glue, a little more glue, not too much, but a little more because you want to make contact in as many spots as you can um, to make sure that it's sealed down really well. Okay, so now I'm going to get my Misty. And of course, we've got that ring light issue, but I know you guys don't care. Live is live, right? Okay, so I'm going to put this up here in the top corner. Oh, and I, I did get the new Misty. I've got to start using that because that just came in into our store and I got the new one and it's pretty cool. I got to show you how cool it is. All right, so this is, I can use this one. Here it is. The Bo, uh, Bold and Blooming stamp set. So I'm going to do the Bold and Blooming stamp set. And I'm going to, you know, this is, this is the heart attack because... You know, I'm going to stamp both of these at the same time, and I want them to be really straight and even, and even from the top to bottom, and even from side to side. And then the stamp is dirty, too, so that's my bad. Okay. I think that's going to do it. Does that look straight? I'm sorry if my head's in the way. Let me just pull this down and look at it real quick here so I can get it nice and straight. I really like the bars to be even on both sides. So if they're a little uneven, I apologize. But this is a great stamp set for rainbow backgrounds like this. Cause you don't need to color it then. It's just like, it's all rainbow and it's really pretty. Okay. I'm just gonna stop messing with it and I'm gonna assume that that is straight enough for this card project. Okay. Now I'm going to, let me check it again. Yep, still looks good. Okay, I'm going to, I wanna make sure this is totally up in that corner because if I have to stamp this a second time, this is kind of a detailed image and I don't wanna mess it up. So I'm using black onyx ink again and I'm inking this up really well. It's a big stamp, even though it's two pieces, it might as well be one big background. Okay, here we go. And whoop, that is not gonna work. Okay, here we go. And down. So let me get my little cloth here because I really wanna make good contact. And I wanna slide. You know the size of the blended piece? The blended piece is three and three quarter inches by five inches. So that's the same cut. If you have the master layouts dies, you can cut it with that. Okay, I'm gonna hold my breath here and pray. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, looking good. Should I do it a second a second time? No. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> Cause that didn't work out for you <laughs> because I screwed up yours. I'm sorry, I'll never live that down. I think I'm gonna do it a second time. <gasps> You're probably going to be right, and then I'm going to be so disappointed. But we'll see. Ah. I really just want to get it in there. Okay. All right. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Sorry it didn't work for you in your video, Tom. I will never do that to you again. <laughs> Isn't this a fun stamp? This set is so fun. And earlier, back when we first were all in lockdown, I used this stamp set and I stamped it on craft and I colored it all in with a white pencil. And um, that's another fun technique. I love when there's more than one technique for a stamp set. It just makes it so much more delicious. All right. So now I think, what greeting? Hello, friend. I'm gonna use hello, friend. I like that because I've been sending cards to people just for no reason. And hello, friend, there's no reason, but it's a nice reason, it's nice. Okay, get that in there. Hello, friend, looks straight. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm such a, like, like a scooch with this. It has to be just so. All right, and is that in right? Okay, hello friend. 
And of course, you can make these wider apart. You could even use this for a slimline card and go real wide and put a big greeting in the middle um, or a banner across, you know, something like that, and then have the flowers coming from the top and the bottom. So this would be a great set for slimlines. I didn't think of that when I was doing all those slimline cards. I might have to do that. I might have to do a slimline with this. I think it calls for a slimline. Okay, here we go. I'll use a piece of paper towel this time because my cloth is buried over there. I'm surprised you don't use the lines in the misty. Yeah, I know. I, I, I never do. I just use my eyeballs. Um, that probably could have gone up a little higher, but I think it's good. I think it'll work. Oh, and I love that texture on the back of that. Love it. So let me make sure I don't have anything on my hands. I don't. Okay, so here we go. Isn't that fun? That texture. Nothing like a rainbow, right? Rainbows, you, you can't get a rainbow card in the mail and not feel a little bit brightened up. So this one, I planned to use the turquoise C because I think that's a nice look there. But I want to try one more thing. Let me get a piece of white cardstock because I just want to see how it looks on a white card base. I know I sound like I'm far away because I am. I'm all the way over here on my bigger paper cutter. I just got to cut this down to um, four and a quarter. And then I have my score buddy here. And I'm going to score it at five and a half. And I'm going to fold it and I'm going to just put that crease in there. So we have to look at it with a white card base. Normally, I might not do this, but because there is no white on this card at all anymore, I think it will really pop up against the white. Yes. Oh, come on. There's nobody in here. Nobody in this room right now that would tell me that that white doesn't look better. Right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody agree? I'm going with white. I'm doing it. Okay. So I'm going to tape this down. Now this doesn't need quite as much tape because I really secured the front panel that could have been a little warpy. And there we go. That's like such a cool kind of hippie look too. I love it. It looks real hippie-ish. Yeah, the white is perfect. Gotta go with the white. Thank you for all the validation. I appreciate that. I love that about all of you, how you you just make me feel so like, yes, I did it. All right, so let me show you these two cards again. Here we go. There's the first one, and here's the second one with the water reactive. I'll show you the water reactive up close. And this one up close. So I'll take pictures of these and I will put them in our Facebook group. And the pictures on Facebook are always so much more crisp and clear than what you can see on a live stream. And that's just because, you know, you just don't get that same um, crispness in a live stream, even in a video that you do when you actually see that photograph really pop. But I had fun doing this. And, you know, it's a simple technique, just that little bit of spritz. I'll have to sand those little black piece, little ink I got there. Um, but just a little water spritz. And if you want it to be a finer mist and you're using this tool, just give it a big hard squirt. And if you want it to be a bigger dot, you just go a little bit and you see the, just a little bit in with the trigger and you get the bigger blotches. So I have some really tiny ones, but I also have some real bigger ones like that right there. And I just love the way that looks. All right. So those are my finished cards. It's already 10 to 10 minutes to eight. And I don't think I have time to do anything else. So I think this will be it for the night. I do want to tell you about our uh, Facebook group. So if you aren't part of our Facebook community, we would love to have you over there. It's Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. Just search that in the Facebook bar gina k designs and stamp tv friends and join we are a really supportive group if you're a new stamper you're an experienced stamper we need both of you um, our experienced stampers are really helpful to our newer stampers and our whole community really really 
just makes each other feel really good. It's really, really a nice place. So we'd love to have you join. Um, so these stamp sets are available at GinaKDesigns.com if you're looking to shop. Um, you can find all of our products there. We do have a lot of things out of stock. We did get a, a new Notify Me app installed on our website. So uh, if there were things in on your Notify list, or you might want to put them back in there again. Uh, because I think when they switched over the app, some of those disappeared. So you want to check those boxes again. But we have a lot of stuff coming back in stock soon. I also want to let you know that we're having a brand new release on August 13th. We have a new kit coming and lots of beautiful new stamp sets and some dies and master layouts too. So you can create all kinds of great mix and match layouts with those. And I'll be doing some videos on that as well. Okay, so um, what's left, Tom? Anything, any questions that I missed? Um, we're doing so. pretty good. Okay. Oh, good. I'm so glad you like the new app. Yeah, the new app is cool because you have to like click, check a little box before you click the button and yeah, it's cool. So, okay, so you guys know, a lot of you know that our um, our little Teddy crossed the Rainbow Bridge last weekend and uh, Tom and I have our waves of emotion. We, we do really well for half the day and all of a sudden something happens. Tonight, Tom was cooking pasta and the sound of the water boiling sounded like Teddy drinking water and we both got all sad again. But you know, I have, a, I have a quote for you about just all of this and kind of getting through and, and you know, making it through, just making it through. Um, sometimes you just have to cry and it's okay. And it's important because you gotta let those emotions out. Uh, we've been doing that a lot lately, right Tom? Yeah. Um, so my quote for tonight is, perhaps our eyes need to be washed by our tears every now and then so we can see life with a clearer view. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I absolutely love all of you, and I am so honored that you are willing to spend an hour with me stamping and chatting. We will be back next Monday with something brand new. Um, I'm going to try to get Tom to come back here behind out from behind the camera and back here to do. You can't afford me. <laughs> yeah, Tom was getting a big head. Everybody was liking his card better than my card. <laughs> I did too, actually. I'm right there with you. So we're going to try to get him to come from behind the camera back onto the, uh, the desk here and do a little bit more stamping hopefully next week. And we'll see, maybe even Reno will make another appearance. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. Please stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.